All right, it's big here. Okay, so um, uh, that's as far as I'm gonna put the interior for now. All right, because I have easy access to the wires, so I can um, I can use the current clamp on it. All right, so we're just gonna go like that. All right, there's not really much going through the line right now. Okay, uh, what I'm gonna do is turn the vehicle on. All right, and we're gonna we're gonna do our testing first. All right, before we put everything back. So. Like last time, I so last time I was able to run the tire warmers fine, all right? It didn't pop right away, but if I left it for more than like a few minutes, it popped, okay? So, but uh, I I know it can run the tire warmers just fine, all right? Um, okay, before we do anything, let's do the heat gun test, all right? But I've got my green tea here. It's cold, it's cold out right now. I'd like to have some green tea. I poured some cold water, all right, from our water dispenser into this cup here and we're gonna make a cup of green tea all right with our hot water pot here just like last time right or last time it failed miserably so <laughs> hopefully it'll do better than that uh, but first before we do that let's do the heat gun test all right well, well, okay first test heat gun test all right uh i got my key here let's start the vehicle up all right uh, i'm gonna turn the inverter on okay 12.1 volts it should be more than that when i turn the vehicle on Okay, the vehicle's on and it's complaining that uh, the back door is open, but we've got 14 volts coming through the co the inverter right now. Let me make sure the the ground, I mean, the, not the ground, the uh, negative. Okay, the vehicle is on right now. Uh, we've got 14.2 volts. I'm gonna connect the uh, this guy up here. All right, where we installed our thing before. I don't kind of don't like this outlet, guys. When I pull it out, the whole thing comes out. Okay, I wish I drilled the hole somewhere else. Okay, so here's the heat gun. We're gonna do low setting. Okay, voltage went down to 14 volts and 140 watts. Not a whole. Wait, wait, wait. It's 140 watts. Okay, it's not a lot. <laughs> We're gonna check the uh, the current. We've got. 37 amps coming through the wire, all right? Still plenty of, uh, still plenty of room, all right? Now we're gonna go to, uh, high. Okay, that's high, that's 98, uh, 980 watts, all right? Oh no, 1.14 watts. It's pretty much maxed out, so just this is enough to max it out, all right, guys? <laughs> all right, how many amps? I'll read it to, to you guys. 92 amps. Okay, so this is a good test right here. This is nearly the full power of the inverter. Okay, so uh, I will let it run for like a minute. Okay, um, yeah, I will just use the timer on the uh, on the camera. I'm just gonna look at the camera. Okay, to see if it uh, if it can handle it. All right, so we'll start we'll start at the two minute mark. <laughs> all right, so we've got. 92 93 amps coming through this wire all right and i'm going to monitor it to make sure it's not getting hot or anything it looks fine the breaker's not popping or anything the inverter seems to be handling it just fine okay 1.14 kilowatts all right 1100 watts basically it's good and hot Ooh, yeah man okay Got 20 seconds. How many volts? 13.6 volts. Okay, current, and then check again. 92 amps. All right, that's fine. We're not that. We're not that close to 120 yet. Okay, five, four, three. Two, one, and you pass, okay? So we ran the heat gun for more than one minute, all right, guys? That's uh, 1,100 watts, and it handled it. 92 amps coming through that that positive, the, the wiring, and uh, it's fine, okay? So I'm gonna go shut it off now. 
Cool. How is the inverter warm or anything? No, not really. It's pretty cool right now. I'll check the wiring right now. Wiring is not hot at all. You can handle that no problem. Okay, guys? So, pass, all right? At, le at least we know we can run this for one minute. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna unplug it now. Boy, the, the wire does get, this, this wire gets warm though. This wire, the extension cord doesn't get uh, like that though. Okay, our okay. second test. Second test is, uh, can we boil some water, all right? So I can make myself some green tea. I've got here my hot, my electric hot water pot. All right. Hopefully the wire's long enough. Ooh, barely. Okay. This is what I use when I go camping. Okay, I'm gonna go pour the water into the hot water pot. Let's do, uh, I, the, the, the cord's not long enough. <laughs> I will just read the current settings to you guys, okay? Oh, no, don't make a mess in here. Don't make a mess in here. Okay. All right. Okay, I've got my packet of green tea right here. It's a Yama, Yamamoto Yama green tea, all right, guys? Make myself a cup of green tea, all right? I'm going to plug it in, and it should start up right away. Okay. Oh, wow. Immediately, it's... The you can hear the fan spin up. All right, 13.6 volts, 960 watts. All right, so this uh, this should be able to do it. All right, guys, I've got. I'll read the current off to you guys. 77 amps. Okay, so this should be able to do it, no problem. All right, guys. All right, you guys can see the water boiling. Let me raise the camera. yeah you guys can see the the water boiling okay so so since since it passed the uh the heat gun test and the heat gun ate up more power than this thing uh i think it should be fine right so um the heat gun is pretty much the limit of what this inverter could do okay i wish this inverter was a little more powerful to be honest Okay, still 77 amps coming through the wire. Nothing is heating up. Okay. Nine, 960 watts, 13.6 volts. Yeah, let me get my... Uh, bag in there. Starting to boil. So I think appliances up to one 1,000 watts is fine with this, right? Though, like I said, the wire is not even heating up at all, okay? So... So definitely the wiring is up to the task, okay guys? It's just unfortunate that the uh, the breaker that we installed before was doo-doo, okay? <laughs> okay, there we go, it's boiling already. That was fast. Okay, boil for a little bit more. Get nice and hot, all right? That will shut off too when it gets a certain temperature, so. Uh, okay, so we've got, uh, I'm going to read it off, 960 watts, 13.6 volts, and 77 amps still, okay? So we're done. Pass. All right, I'm going to go and plug it now. I'm going to make sure I hold the outlet. Well, let's see, I'm going to pull it. Okay, good. Just stop. All right. Cool, there it is. All right, and then we're going to go pour myself a cup of tea. Awesome, there it is. All right, let me dunk it a couple times. <laughs> All right, let me 
dunk it. Let me dunk it a couple times. Okay, there we go. Cool deal. There she is. Okay, next test. Vacuum cleaner, all right? This vacuum cleaner can draw 12 amps, it says, all right? So that's about, that's like a thousand watts-ish, okay? Um, I'm gonna plug it into the outlet again. Okay, plugged in. I'm gonna fire it up. I saw that surge, it said 12, it said uh, 1200 watts and it went down to like 11. Oh, you just what there's, uh, so it's one, uh, 1000 watts, all right? So this, this vacuum eats up about a thousand watts. And it seems to be running it just fine. Current is drawing 87 amps, all right? So that's even less than the, oh, 87. Yeah, that's a, so that's a less than the, the heat gun, but more than the, but more than what the the teapot, all right, teapot puts out, all right. Cool. Let me uh, let me turn the brush the roller on. Okay, it went up just a tiny bit to run the roller on the vacuum. Okay, I think that's good. All right, I'm gonna go unplug it. All right, cool. What else can we try? <laughs> okay, next test. Suron Light B charger. All right, for it's a 72 volt battery for 72 volt Suron. All right, I'm gonna plug it in. Turn it on. Okay, and we're gonna plug it in the battery and charge. It's 84 volts on this guy, and then uh, what we're gonna do is I'm just gonna jack up everything. All right. All right, so this this can charge at 10 amps. All right, Let's see how much that is. Okay, there we go. It's charging it. That battery is pretty full of charge. So, all right, but uh, see, this charger only eats up like 740 watts. Pretty good. 740 watts, 13.6 volts. And we've got 78 amps coming through the wire. Okay. You handle that, no problem. All right, how much more power do we have left over? Mm, man, we got about a, ooh, let me see, three. 500 watts left, not a whole lot of power while charging the battery. Okay. That's what I'm gonna be doing with this. I'm probably gonna be using this charger a whole lot. So. Um, yeah, so it seems like it can handle this just fine. All right, so I'm gonna lower the charge current to like six amps, and then you should see this come down a little bit. All right, see now it's eating 460 watts down to like two amps. All right, only like 160 amp, 160 watts on the lowest setting. That's two amps coming out of that charger. 140, 140 watts. Okay, so there we go. You can do it. Cool. Does the wire get hot at all? No. Does the inverter get hot? The inverter does get warm. <laughs> the inverter is getting pretty warm. <laughs> I just want to say, okay. Okay, pretty good. I'm pretty happy with this. The breaker doesn't break anymore, so. Uh, is there anything else I can test? <laughs> Let me think. Okay, this seems to work. Okay, fine. guys, I got my air fryer here. Okay, this is now. I'm not. I'm not gonna lie. This is guaranteed to overload this inverter. All right, I just looked at the label on the bottom of it, and it consumes 1,700 watts. Okay, so. Okay, I pretty much guarantee you that the the um the inverter will get overloaded. Okay, so this is a lot of. Power. Okay, plug it in. Okay, it's on. And, uh, and yeah, we'll just fire it up and see how long it lasts. All right, so this inverter can handle 1,200 watts uh, and 2,400 watts surge power, all right? So it should have enough, it should have more than enough power to start this bad boy, 
how long it can run it, I don't know. <laughs> that we'll find out right now. Okay. Let's turn it on. Oh, overload. <laughs> all right. It, did, it didn't run it at all. All right, guys. Oh, there you go. Oh, it overloaded again. Okay, okay, okay. I'll plug it. Immediately. It immediately overloaded. Okay, so 1,700 watts is a no-go. All right, so air fryer is a no-go. You're not taking an air fryer with you here, uh, camping Hades Omega. <laughs> but I think it would be great to have an air fryer, you know? Um, I don't even think, yeah, I don't even think my generator could handle that, man. My generator only does 1,600 watts also, so... Okay, so uh, yeah, so we tested the limits. All right, guys, I can boil water. All right, I oh yeah, there's something. Oh, there's one more. There's one more thing I use when I'm camping. But anyway, uh, yeah, so we found out so far we can boil water. We can charge a 72 volt battery. It's not here. Sorry, guys. We can run a heat gun on the highest setting, and uh, we we cannot run an air fryer. Okay, so <laughs> it's too much power. And we can run a, like a 12 amp vacuum. Okay, another camping accessory I use is uh, this. Uh, it's a it's a double burner hot plate. Okay, um, basically a stove top. All right, and uh, yeah, we're gonna go plug it in. So let's turn it off. Okay, so um, this guy, all right, it's one thousand watts. I I think it's according to the box. It says it's one thousand watts for the for the big burner, and the uh, and five hundred watts for the little burner. Okay. And most of the time, honestly, I would probably just use a small burner. I should probably just buy a smaller one, you know? Um, I don't take, like, big, big pots and stuff with me when I go camping, all right? All right, I'm going to plug it in and make sure the wire doesn't burn. <laughs> okay, it's got a... Just make sure it's wired. Okay, there we go. Okay. It's not consuming any power right now. Let's try the small burner first. Okay, it's on. Okay, you can see here it's drawing uh, 400 watts. It said 460 watts. Okay, and 37 amps is coming through the uh, um, the wire. Okay, the 12 volt wire. Okay, no problem. Okay, I'm gonna turn the small burner off and turn the big burner on. Ooh, wow, immediately you can hear that inverter. It's working hard. So 900 watts, actually. They lied. It's actually 900 watts, not 1,000 watts. <laughs> okay. All right, but that's a lot of power, guys. 900 watts. Okay, how much do we got coming out of the wire? 74 amps. So it, it could it could power this, no problem, all right? 900 amp, 900 uh, watts. All right, so that means we've got like 300 more watts, all right? So, so what was the other one? The other one was like 400 something watts. All right, so if if we turn on the other burner, it will overload, okay guys? That's my guess. Here we go. Okay, that's two. Oh, overload. Yeah, there we go. Didn't last very long. Okay. Let's see. Yeah, yeah, 1300 watts. All right, turn it off. Okay, there it goes. Turn back on. All right, 900 watts. All right, uh, is there anything that would we could run that's like 300 watts, man? I don't know, man. <laughs> yeah, no, I think that's it. Okay, guys, that's, that's the end of the test. All right, this is the stuff that I would normally take with me camping. Uh, I do use tire warmers at the racetrack. I think it eats up like 600 watts, so it's not all that much power. It should be able to run that no problem. But the good thing is, so what we found out, all right, that we found out is that breaker is garbage, all right? The one that I installed before last time. Uh, so now this is the new setup right here, okay? The wire comes in from there and it goes under the spare tire kind of hump there. And then um, it goes, uh, oh man, it's making some noise. Um, and then uh, it goes up through here, all right? Under, through here, this passageway, and it connects to the battery here, okay? And then there's a, uh, there's a switch here that you can use to turn, to, um, cut the power off, alright? A breaker switch. So let's go test that out real quick, and then, uh, we'll put everything back in. It looks like, uh, successful. Hades Mega is pretty happy. Um, you gotta be careful. It will, this will not run all appliances, as you can see. It will, it would not run a, uh, 
Um, it wouldn't run the air fryer. That's the only thing it wouldn't run, and it won't run both of these burners at the same time. It can only run one. So Hades Mega should probably downsize, just get a single burner. <laughs> okay, but it's nice to be able to cook two things at the same time, and uh, apparently we can't do that. So Okay. But yeah, it seems to be running 900 watts just fine. We, I think we took it up to uh, 1100 watts, and it could do that just fine. All right, guys. Um, which one was 1100 watts? I think it was the vacuum or something. Some, something. Oh no, the 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 heat gun. The heat gun was the one that ate up the most power. That was 1100 watts. All right. Uh, I wouldn't try to push anything more than that. All right. That you're already like at the limit. This thing's going to be working like overtime. How hot is it getting at 900 watts? It's warm. It's warm right now, all right? The air coming out of the back is warm, all right? So the cool thing is, yeah, there's a lot of space around here. When I put well, when I put everything back in, we'll take a look again, but, but yeah, it looks like it's sucking the air through here and it's blowing it out right here, okay? So it's sucking it through this way and it's exhausting it here. And if there's some air here, it'll go around the spare tire well. It'll probably, there's a little vents in this thing for whatever reason, so yeah. I think it's it's good. It's got heat sinks and stuff on it doesn't seem to be getting too hot right now so but the weather is pretty cool right now is what I want to say okay cool deal um, so I'm gonna go ahead and uh, put it put the interior back in and we're done with all the testing this breaker passed with flying colors all right uh, what was it 1100 watts and it was like nine this could handle 90 amps all right we I think the most that we pushed through here was like about 90 close to 100 amps all right and it was perfectly fine okay oh man it's gonna start to get smelly in here let me turn that off <laughs> Okay, yeah, so awesome. So now my uh, RAV4 is an even better camping vehicle. I don't have to take a gasoline generator with me anymore. I can run most appliances with this uh, inverter, all right? And it fits inside the spare tire cover, all right? The 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 trunk uh, the tr uh, trunk cargo area. All right? Awesome. I'm very happy with it. All right. Uh, well, we'll see when I when we actually go use it. <laughs> okay, but I um, yeah, so that was the problem before that breaker that we had was was garbage. All right, so this one is much much better. Okay, um, it didn't break. Oh yeah, we forgot to do one thing. All right, uh, we forgot to test the uh, the breaker switch. Okay, so we're gonna so I'm gonna go kill the power to the inverter right now. Okay, if you guys are wondering how much current is coming through that wire, 73 amps right now. Okay, so we're gonna press this button and it should just turn off all right it should the the inverter will probably just die okay here we go boom okay it says low and it just shuts off okay I'll turn this off and then i'm going to reset it okay so when you reset it you gotta turn it back on okay pretty cool all right turn that off all right, I'm gonna go put the interior back in and then you guys will see the, the final uh, product uh, at this stage, all right, for, for this video, all right? All right, here's we go. All right, here's we go here. And so here it is, that's the final result. All right, that's what it looks like with, uh, without the lid on, okay? Um, so everything fits in there nicely. I had to move the, uh, let me see here. Okay, so I had to move the, um, this cord like right under here so it doesn't t so the tire doesn't touch it so um or we could have just put the spare tire on top of the wire which is is fine I, I don't mind this wire is pretty strong it's not gonna it's not easy to damage it as long as say okay um so the wire is coming here and it's going underneath the little passage there yeah there you go you can see it it's going underneath here there's that there's that uh, support brace for the spare tire and then it goes through um, it goes through here. Okay, you can see. So this is my inflator, and these are some spare softy ties. I've got a uh, flat repair kit here. Okay, um, it's a plug kit. And then um, there's the negative wire coming up into here. There's a positive wire coming here. All right, this moves a little bit. It actually it's actually kind of loose, so I think that's good. You want it, you know, you don't want to put a lot of tension on the wires. All right, the wire is going, yeah, the wire's crossing on top of this fuse box thing right here, all right, it's, it's fine, whatever. Okay, and then there it is, spare tire fits fine. All right, here's a little donut for the spare tire. 
Oh man, if I can get a sub to fit in there. I do like having this little thing. I don't like this foam that's down here. This foam eats up a lot of space. So you could put a lot of stuff underneath there, but it just, yeah, it's just stuff, you know? There's no space, um, it eats up your cargo space, man. So yeah, that's my inflator right there. And so this area is a little bit, I can, I probably have room to put a little something here. I might be able to put these napkins here. So it fits. As long as uh, it doesn't touch this, uh, this button is fine, but I'm just going to keep this up here. Oh, this is fine. It's like my camping stuff, man. Okay, uh, I got toe strap here. The old tools, like I mentioned last time, they're here. All right, there's tools here, there's tools here, and I think the little hook, yeah, the hook for the spare, the, the jack is right here. All right, so this goes with that. And then, yeah, and then there, so here's the inverter, like I mentioned before. There's plenty of space around it. We want to keep this space open so there's good airflow here. So the airflow is going to suck the air through here, out here, and then it's going to exhaust it right here. Okay, and it's going to come through here. All right. Um, yeah, so so the air is going to kind of, it's going to get hot back here. <laughs> so let's say, all right, um, if you're running the inverter a lot, okay, uh, which is, it's okay. Um, my, my suggestion is uh, when you're uh, when you're running the inverter um, Crack this crack the lid open a little bit to let some of the air out. Okay, it has a fan on it So I think it'll be fine. You don't need any kind of fan But um, it just just crack the lid open a little bit and what that'll do is I guess uh, <laughs> I guess it'll let cool air in <laughs> so it's good. I don't know. I don't know how that's gonna work, man <laughs> Yeah, um, it'll let cool air in so so it'll it'll suck it in, it'll suck the cool air in through the intake and it'll, it'll exhaust the hot air through the back. But there's not really a good place for it to come in. It's probably going to go here and go. It'll hit this wall here. It'll go in here through this inside this panel and it'll go out here. It'll go here this way. Okay, which is okay. There's still still a lot of space in there, I guess. Um, ideally, it would be good to not have anything right here. All right, don't put anything right here. Because that blow, blow impede the airflow, right? But like I said, there's there's some vents right here also. So okay, so uh, so yeah, let's go close it up and I'll show you what it looks like. Uh, I'm pretty sure you'll know what it looks like. It just looks like a regular Rav4 trunk. Okay. <laughs> uh, okay. Also, another thing is yes, I could you I could just uh, uh, disconnect that. All right. If we're not using the inverter, we can use this as our switch. Okay. Um, this this is like the master switch. All right. Type of thing. All right. Um, one thing you to be cautious with all right i guess it would have been better to put the put the breaker in here yeah <laughs> well okay the reason i wanted the breaker here is if it does trip i can reset it all right and it's all i have to do is lift the cover up and i'll demonstrate lift the cover up and then press the button you know or or turn it on all right so that's on and that's breaker off okay um only thing i worried about is yes these wires are kind of exposed a little bit all right um the top is fine, okay. However, the uh, um, the the terminal, okay, the ring terminal is uh, is exposed a little bit, okay. So what I might want to do is just put some electrical tape around this area here, All right? Put some kind of cover. I mean, this works pretty good, but but this is exposed right here. So what I want to do is just wrap a little bit of electrical tape around here. This one I'm not too worried about, but but yeah, potentially you could. I don't know. There's a lot of plastic around here. So it's actually, this is actually a good place to put it. All right. So I want to say, okay. And then, yeah, this, this isn't totally, this is kind of floating. So, um, it, it'll, you know, vibrations and stuff, it'll, it'll kind of, um, dampen some of the vibrations and stuff too. So that actually works out pretty good. I'll tell you the truth. Okay. All right. Let me go close it up. Okay guys. And there it is when it's all hidden <laughs> okay so the only thing you could tell you have an inverter is uh this uh this outlet right here okay and it looks like it belongs there it looks good okay just uh make sure when you pull it out um hold on to it because you could just pull the whole thing out i did it before so <laughs> okay it, it depends on how tight the, I, i'd imagine maybe this will this is probably really tight the outlet okay so to run the inverter all right okay so to run uh, the inverter the camera all right i haven't installed the remote switch yet I'll go over what the next project is going to be. All right, all I have to do is lift this up, all right? And then I have to uh, make sure that the breaker here, all right? All right, make sure that the breaker here is on, all right? It's off right now. I'm going to turn it on, okay? And then hold the button down. There we go. Okay, turns on. 
voltage should be around 14, 13 to 14 volts, all right? Um, if your vehicle is on, all right? You, remember, you have to run it. If you're gonna run something with this, your vehicle has to be on or else you will drain the 12 volt battery, okay? Um, you don't want that, all right? You could damage the battery too, so. Okay, and then when you're done, you just press the button, turn it off, all right? And if you want to, you can just press the button on the breaker and then that'll, that'll kill the power to the inverter, okay? Pretty cool. I like it. I like this setup better than before. Before that, uh, the breaker was back there, all right, and it was kind of hard to get to, all right. But I can still pretty easily get to it, all right. The only problem I don't like is that yeah, sometimes this is hard to open if you got a lot of stuff in here. And usually when I'm camping, I got a whole lot of stuff in here. Okay, so so yeah. Sorry, it's out of focus. Okay, and that. So that's it. That's the end of it. All right, and so with that, my inverter stall is finally done, all right? So unfortunately, last time we got a bad uh, breaker and it didn't work very well at all, okay? Um, it definitely, you don't want that thing tripping before your, um, your inverter, okay? Um, the wire is uh, two gauge, all right? It's very powerful. You can put a lot of current through there. You saw we put like 90 amps through it. Didn't even break a sweat, okay? I, I felt the wire, it didn't get hot at all, okay? Uh, and we never even tripped the breaker, all right? So um, that breaker is 120 amps, and uh, I think the most we put through is maybe close to like 100, all right? And so that's the that's the proper size breaker, not like the other one. The other one popped at like 60 amps already, all right? That's not a lot. That's like half of what that wire is rated for, okay? So that's not, that was a defective product is what, <laughs> is what I'm gonna say, all right? So I didn't recommend using that breaker. Okay, um, so so yeah, so that's what we got so far. Um, I So in this video, I installed the new breaker and then we tested out a, a variety of appliances uh, uh, with the with the Jamdel uh, 12, 1200 watt inverter, okay? We found out we can run a hot water pot, we can run a heat gun on the highest setting, we can run one hot plate, all right? And then um, we cannot run a... Uh, a air fryer, okay. No air, no air fryer for you, Hades Mega. And we cannot run. Uh, oh, and, and and we can run a vacuum cleaner, right? Uh, vacuum corded vacuum cleaner is fine. That eats up a lot of power, guys. Almost like a thousand watts. Uh, ideal appliance to plug into this. I would say don't go more, no more than like a thousand watts or like eleven hundred watts. Okay, is what I want to say. Um, and yeah, so um, one of, you want to worry about like the the DC DC converter, all right? So what? charges your 12 volt battery is a DC DC converter so um, but uh, but it's got a it's got like a battery protection and stuff on it so if you're drawing too much current it will it will shut it off okay uh, it looks like it looks like the electrical system on the uh, the, uh, the 12 volt electrical system all right on the uh, RAV4 prime can handle it no problem okay so it looks like 1200 watts is good all right ideally Hayes Mega would want like a 1500 watt inverter, right? I think they do sell one, but it probably won't fit in here, okay? So this is like kind of like a stealth setup, man. It's almost like OEM, that's <laughs> what I say, all right? Um, and I know where the inverter is. It's got the little gauges on it. We can read it, very nice. It's got a USB charger on it. We've got an outlet here now, okay? So uh, what, what other, um, what other um, projects do I have for this inverter, all right? Um, we're gonna install an OEM outlet, all right? Just like the stock one, all right? I, I, like I mentioned in the beginning of the video, we, I ordered it and that will, I will install it in a separate video, okay? And then we're gonna install the remote switch that came with the inverter, all right? I found the black one. Uh, the one that comes with it is white and I don't have a white interior, all right? I got a black interior and it'll look better with the white, with the black switch, all right? So we'll install a remote switch so we don't even have to open this anymore, okay? Uh, the only thing we have to open it for is to uh, to to reset the breaker or you know or turn the breaker off, okay. Um, and the, the other thing is to open it is uh, for airflow, okay. So if, if let's say it's the summertime or something, uh, or if, yeah, let's say you're using this thing, uh, I suggest that you just leave this propped open, okay. Get something, stick it underneath there, all right. And leave it up uh, leave it open a little bit okay so you can get some fresh air in there to cool the inverter down okay that's if you're if you're using that inverter at, at like a, a lot of, if you're using a lot of power okay 
if you're using up to like a thousand watts i suggest like yeah keep this thing open a little bit all right just just crack it open a little bit so it could suck some fresh air in there and cool the inverter down all right um i think it does have a thermal overload overload all right if it gets too hot it'll shut off so that's okay okay you don't want the, but you don't want it to do that all right <laughs> type of thing okay all right cool deal i was able to um to boil uh, uh some green tea all right pretty good i was able to run a heat gun and uh and i can cook some stuff on a little stove all right so i'm pretty happy i think that should be good enough for that should definitely be good enough for camping Okay, um, and I also charged uh, my electric motorcycle, and, and uh, I plan to use uh, tire warmers, all right? The tire warmers only eat up like 600 watts, so it could totally handle that, okay? Um, when you get to about 900 watts plus, uh, that's when that's when the, it's going to, you know, you're going to be testing its its limits, <laughs> okay? That's what I want to say. And you got to make sure the vehicle is on, okay? Okay, so in, an, in, the, in a future video, we'll install... The OEM outlet, all right, so we get that OEM looks, and then we will have two outlets. We'll have one here and one here, okay? And then uh, and then we'll have a remote switch, all right? Uh, uh, that'll be another video. We'll, I'll install it somewhere in here, and then we could turn the inverter on and off without having to open the um, open this, okay? Okay, thanks for watching. Hey, it's Miguel. I hope this was an educational and entertaining video. Hey, it's Miguel.